Hi everyone, this is CJFM from Hidden Assets, and I'm here to talk about the brand new MWL Most Wanted list for Android Netrunner. Um, we have a couple of interesting changes to the runner side, and the first one is the inclusion of Rumor Mill that was on the restricted, or the banned list, is now on the restricted list, and Tapworm, which is a new include entirely. Um, the main thing I wanted to talk about today is uh, what these two inclusions do to the, to the game, to DAX, where the metagame might be pushed, and, um, and that's in including some of the uh, corp cards that are also restricted and banned. Uh, so let's talk about the runner side first. So Rumor Mill is a, an extremely polarizing card. It was a very unfun card to play against in the time of Rumor Mill Blackmail Val. Uh, effectively, nothing could keep Val out of a server at all if with that combination and it became even more um, feel bad I guess when Cipher was in the game. So um, Michael Boggs decided that it was an okay idea to remove Rumor Mill because uh, remove Rumor Mill from the removed list and put it on the restricted list because it uh, targeted some very powerful corp cards that are being played at a at the very high level such as MCA Austerity Policy, Brian Stinson, um, Estelle Moon, and a couple others. Uh, originally, Rumor Mill seemed to be designed to counter uh, things like Jackson Howard, but Jackson Howard is no longer in the game. Um, so what does Rumor Mill actually do? Well, besides countering those aforementioned three cards, we also lose some access to Ash and uh, uh, Marcus Batty and other sort of fringe or semi-fringe playable cards or non-playable cards uh, that also um, become blank because of it. So what does this mean? Well, in my opinion, it doesn't mean a whole lot right now. Corps are corps that are using MCI Austerity Policy or Brian Stinson are also playing several currents, and most of them are out of cerebral imaging. Um, what it does tend to do is it hurts uh, decks like uh, Ag Infusion or Palana, sort of like a fair Glacier Palana the most, which often relies on Batty to end the run in conjunction with Nisei Mark II. So in some ways, uh, those sort of fair decks, ones that play Ash and Batty as ways to score agendas, which I don't think are powerful cards on the same level uh, as Mark, uh, as uh, MC Austerity Policy, or even, even Moons, uh, they get hit way harder because their only way to score and the only way to win is by scoring behind a bunch of ice with a defensive upgrade. Now just kind of think about that for a minute. What Urmiel does to some decks, to fair decks, and what I would call like true Netrunner, and I know a lot of people might think that's a contentious idea, but in my view, uh, Netrunner at its core is about um, hackers trying to get by security uh, in and infiltrate um, servers in order to steal agendas uh, and things like that. If you remove the ability for the corp to do that, to score out in a remote, then we get this weird sort of reaction from the corp side where things will start to be much more fast advancy. Um, we saw this with the last uh, cycle before the uh, rotation where most corps were a kind of prison deck or fast advance deck or combo deck. Um, I'm not sure that we're going to get the return of uh, prison decks all that much, but things like door to door and door to door NBN and um, industrial genomics could definitely return. I don't really like the inclusion of Rumor Mill on the restricted list. I personally think it should have been left from the left uh, in the on the removed list. I, I don't like this I have this change to the restricted list. Besides the fact that it just sort of turns off a bunch of different cards, I find the card to be extremely poorly designed. Like I don't like really like cards that blank things. Um, I'm not a fan of uh, running interference in uh, Star Wars Destiny because it it invalidates uh, the opponent's natural actions. So if if this is a card that turns off core aspects of the game, I think it is a, a, a card that should be always 
removed from the game. However, I'm willing to give uh, Boggs and the crew the benefit of the doubt that it won't warp the meta. And I, I'm not trying to overreact. In other words, I, I think that it's still it's a powerful card. Um, but because it's on the restricted list, are people going to choose Rumor Mill over something like Employee Strike or Film Critic or Levy? I just don't know. And I don't think so. I think Rumor Mill, we might see it in a certain Val um, Reg Anarch decks, but that's about it. And even then, Employee Strike is often a better choice. Now, what they could do is they could play Rumor Mill and save three influence and play an extra indexing or test run or whatever. And that does seem appealing. Um, for Reg Val, Rumor Mill tends to improve their game against a uh, certain Glacier, HB, decks, and you already have things like Stimhack that are really good against those decks, but they tend to lose to Lakshmi decks like because they can't play Film Critic because they usually don't. They can, though. But if you were on an Employee Strike deck, Employee Strike Val, switching to Rumor Mill might be a better choice for you. It might be. You get worse in your Scorp matchup, and you get worse in your CTM matchup, but you, and your Agon Fusion matchup, but you get better in sort of the uh, HB Glacier matchups. I, I'm honestly not sure if that's something someone wants to do, given that uh, a lot of HB was just nerfed. And we'll get there in a minute. But anyway, uh, the next card that I want to talk about is Tapworm. Tapworm being included on the MWL restricted list is good. I think it's good for the game. The card is extremely powerful, and it puts... It, it's effectively only a, <laughs> a green... It's only a Shaper card that just tends to cost two influence. And that is not good. Tapworm is best, obviously, when it's used with something like uh, Sacrificial Construct to prevent it from being trashed. And when that happens, you just end up kind of like time walking the corp over and over, or they can continue playing the game and the runner just gets rich and rich and rich and rich. And in conjunction with things like Peace in Our Time, that does make Tapworm a force to be reckoned with. And it's actually kind of a, not a negative player experience, so I'm, I'm fine with that. Now, if someone wants to play Tapworm, they can't play with Clone Chip, they can't play with Levy, um, they can't play with Film Critic. So, what do you play with? Uh, it's a difficult question. I think it still will be played, but it's going to be in a much more concentrated, um, you know, once through economy deck, because Levy's also on here, so you can't, you can't really recycle your, your Tapworms. All right, let's uh, move on. There's nothing changed to the removed list uh, for Runner. We still have the same junk that, except for Brewer Mill, uh, that, that we've had before. And, you know, I'm glad. It should have been like that. It should These cards should never come off the most wanted list ever. Aaron Moran was, was an abomination. Cipher was an abomination. Temujin Contract was way too good. Anyway, moving on. Let's talk about the Corpse Restricted list. There are a couple of new new cards on this uh, on this list. Brain Rewiring is one. Mother Goddess is the second one. Uh, Wampoa Reclamation is the third. And then they moved uh, Mumbad City Hall from the removed list to the restricted list. So I want to start with Brain Rewiring. This card should probably have been banned, um, just outright. I suppose that someone can figure out a way to make a Brain Rewiring deck without all the extra pieces, such as Mother Goddess, um, and all we, you already couldn't play Fairchild 3, but you couldn't play, you, you now can't play it with Global Food Initiative, so I, I assume you play it with, um, you know, uh, a, a, just a big 3-5 and hope that you can score it, or, or not get it stolen, rather. So I'm okay with that, even though I just think it should have been banned because it's just a problem card. Brain Rewiring was never played in any other deck, but the CI combo uh, brain rewiring deck. There's there's no other deck that plays brain rewiring. There's no reason for, to it. It just didn't work and didn't do anything in those decks. So, anyway, it's effectively banned. No one's going to play it. That's my guess. Uh, the other addition is Mother Goddess. So Mother Goddess, I think this might have actually been a bit of an 
overreaction, but I think Mother Goddess is fine on the list. Mostly because Mother Goddess plus Loki in the CI combo deck um, can lock people out of the game. And it just can lock them out, like, full stop. They can't play. And that is bad for the game. It's a huge feel-bad. It's a, it's a really bad thing to have happen to you. It makes you realize that that some of the cards should not exist. And Mother Goddess is one of those cards that probably should have been rotated, but has not. Not yet, anyway. Um, I'm okay with it on here. I, I'm totally fine with Mother Goddess on here. I don't think anyone's going to really have a problem with it. Um, inadvertently, a lot of Titan Rush decks got hit because they were also playing Hunter Seeker or Food, uh, Global Food Initiative. So that kind of sucks. I kind of wish that, you know, maybe Brain War Army just banned so that you didn't have to choose and they could have kept Mother Goddess off it, something like that. Um, but I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, Wampo Reclamation is a very efficient uh, recursion card. And, you know, one of the things we're seeing consistently with, with Android Netrunner is that recursion cards are the most powerful cards in the game. Let's just quickly take a look at the removed list. Uh, clone su Suffrage Movement. When your turn begins, you may add one operation from Archives to HQ if there is no ice protecting the server. Um, there's recursion or friends in the high places. After you resolve this operation and your action phase, install up to two cards from archives paying its install costs. So these are extremely efficient for their cost recursion. And in, especially in conjunction, people were using clone suffrage to re return friends and friends to return clone suffrage and other things and it just went on forever, it was annoying. So Wampler Reclamation is a little bit more fair but um, it, it allows you to bury agendas at the bottom of the deck and at the bottom of the, the R&D, and that is powerful. It's powerful because then the game goes on longer, you know where your agendas are, and it also tends to be played in those decks that just want to kill you and hide agendas and never score them. So I think hitting Wampo Reclamation is a really good move from Boggs. I really like this, this addition. I like this card too, but I also think that it can be problematic. And now we have, now, now runners, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see it and go like, oh, okay, well, they're not going to have all these other things that are problematic. Or they're going to see, um, you know, a fair child three and go like, well, they're not going to recur, um, or they're not going to hide agendas at the bottom. Or, or if you, if they're playing Gagarin, they're probably going to be playing something like maybe, maybe Mumbad City Hall. I don't know. So I want to move over to Mumbad City Hall. Mumbad City Hall was uh, simply an overpowered card. It was poorly designed because of how fast and efficient it it allowed you to set up um, with all the alliance cards. I honestly think that putting it on this restricted list does absolutely nothing to the game. Um, I'm not exactly sure if there is a, a My Bad City Hall deck that that wants to play alliances. Um, it, it can now get Consulting Visit, which is kind of cool, but it still can't get Museum of History or Mumba Temple, which were the enablers. Um, and I think because of that, it's just going to be a, a card no one's going to play. So I don't think this really changed a whole lot. I had some cool ideas of playing Mumbad City Hall with things like um, Salem's Hospitality, which is also an alliance, or Product Recall. And, you know, you can now get um, Mumbad Virtual Tour. I mean, you can get that. That's an alliance. You can get Ibrahim Saline of Salem if you really wanted. I mean, there are a bunch of weird cards. Executive search firm, you know, you can get these things, but I'm not exactly sure if that's a deck that wants to exist. <laughs> so I'm not sure that's going to exist ever. But it's cool, and it's definitely for fun, so maybe people will figure some way to make it work. So uh, on, on the whole, I really like this restricted list for the Corp. I think this is much stronger. Um, I think that the Mumbad City Hall thing doesn't change anything. The Wampo Reclamation just solidifies my opinion that too much recursion, especially too much recursion at instant speed, is a problem for the game. Um, the fact that you can res one ball reclamation and use it immediately, or you can use it on your turn and then on the runner's turn so that effectively you get two cards buried to the bottom is extremely powerful. So it, it did, it was sort of balanced out that it costs three to res and three to trash, but you know, what can you do? Um, the final card I want to talk about was, is a Brand new, re, uh, brand new addition to the removed list, and that is Violet Level Clearance. So just over here, uh, Violet Level Clearance 
deserved to be on this list. Um, I think also restricting it would have been fine, but it is far too efficient for what it does. It effectively gives you four cards and three credits, and you can play it turn one, which means that decks like CI Combo, sort of Wilfy CI, or um, other kinds of, you know, CI hard hitting use boom can get so far ahead, they can fill their hands so fast that the runner really can't catch up. Or if they did, or if they do catch up, it's usually through a kind of Hail Mary card like um, Info Sifting. So I am totally fine with Violet Level Clearance. I'll be a little sad because I have to be honest, I did like, I did like playing uh, Cerebral Imaging with Violet Level Clearance um, in many forms, but it was too good for the game. And uh, anyway, having, you know, ha having HB have 12 potential transactions for, um, for Brian Stinson, that's a problem. So now they're back down to nine. That is hedge fund, IPO, and ultraviolet level clearance. That, that seems fair. I think they, they should have about nine. So I don't know. I still think that CI is going to be a, a good deck, but it's not going to be as dominant as it was before. Um, yeah, I, I think that's fine. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is what is the MWL doing for competitive play? In my opinion, it's going to be pushing uh, runners towards Val, towards Max, maybe Omar, towards Anarchs who have the best economy right now with liberated accounts, with, you know, um, the heat breakers injects so much draw. I think that's going to happen instantly. People are going to be ditching Shaper uh, en masse. So what what is Shaper going to do? And then I'd like to talk briefly about what is what is criminal doing anyway. Well, now they've got, you know, their best econ card basically ruined. So Shaper has a tough choice. I've seen some Haley decks that have been playing Liberated Accounts instead of Tapworm, and they've been pretty good. I've seen some deep data mining um, uh, Hook and Kagamoto kind of decks that just go all in on accessing cards in R&D. Those are pretty good. I, th I, think, I think they're a little bit too slow, but they're pretty good. Um, I've seen some interesting Kabanisa Wu decks that have been successful, and that makes me excited for green. And I've seen a couple of CT decks or Chaos Theory decks that have done well as well. And I think that those are kind of, that's kind of where Shaper is, but they're all kind of the old, same old sort of stuff, you know? Um, one of my problems with Shaper right now is they seem to be st sort of stuck. They're stuck between the restricted list and a hard place. They really want Levy because they draw through their decks and they have lots of empower they have lots of powerful cards you want to reuse. But they really can't use that and Aesop's Pawn Shop. You know, they really want Aesop's Pawn Shop. So I don't know. One of the things I've been wishing for is that Aesop's would come off the list. It is one of the kind of uh, I don't know, signature cards in green. It's also one of the more interesting cards, too, because trashing your stuff is not always easy to, you know, you got to trash some things you don't want to trash sometimes, or, you know, you can get a lot of value out of a daily cast Aesops and stuff like that. I kind of wish that they would take Aesops off and that it would kind of like propel green a little bit forward, but hey, hopeful. We'll just be hopeful. Um, as for Criminal, well, they really don't have a whole lot right now. Like, Criminal is in a tough spot, um, honestly. And the reason they're in a tough spot is their breakers suck. Um, their events are underwhelming. They've lost, uh, they lost Siphon so a long time ago, so now they, they really don't really have much. Until we get the Siphon replacement, I don't think we're going to see Shaper, or sorry, uh, Criminals coming back and doing much of anything. I've seen some Leelas doing things here, you know, gang sign Leelas, or just normal reg Leelas. They've been okay. Just okay. But they tend to have bad matchups and where the Val decks or the Max decks don't. So I don't know. Um, what I think this restricted list for runners shows us is that everything's going to be pushed toward red. We're going to be seeing a lot more of that, a lot more Val. Um, 
but I, I do I am hopeful that we'll see some more shaper and even maybe a criminal here or there. As for corp, um, initially I think we're going to see people move away from HB because it was the most changed from this restricted list. I think we'll see a shift back to Scorpios. Scorpios has always been pretty good, and it's it's not like a a major player, but you know it has won store championships. It is a powerful deck. It has a lot of play. Um, I think we'll see some Scorpios come back. I think we'll see some maybe some uh, probably not some Core Whalen, maybe some Titan come back here or there. But Whalen's in a weird spot. Maybe we'll see Gagarin. I don't think so though. Um, NBN has basically had nothing happen to them. They're still powerful. CTM is probably going to be the best deck now. So we're going to see a lot of people slotting, probably strike, uh, employee strike to deal with CTM. Um, I think that's almost a guaranteed. Uh, Polana got hurt. I don't know if Polana is, or, um, I don't know if Polana or Egg Infusion are going to see much play after this. I mean, they are, they have some good cards coming up in the next couple packs, but man, it's just rough. It, it's really it's rough goings when you get like Marcus Batty and Ash, kind of like hosed. So anyway, that's my uh, review of this uh, MWL. If you have any thoughts or want to share some of your your concerns or thoughts about this, this MWL, what do you think about it? You know, what do you think about my opinions? It's fine. Uh, just leave me a message. Um, I'm pretty open for commentary discussion discussion. So. Um, you know, what do you want to see on the restricted list? What do you want to see on the banned list? Uh, and thanks a lot. We'll talk to you later. See ya.